Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I recommend movies and then we talk about them. And last time we talked about some very popular movies, actually. Some very well-known movies. So we're, we're getting back to the basics with some very weird, obscure stuff. It's uh, Arrow Video's American Horror Project Volume 2. Three very obscure regional horror films. Start things off from 1977. The Child is the first one we watched. The Child is about a woman who's supposed to be like a, a tutor for this little girl. Um, I forget the little girl's name, but basically like she, she and her family live like way out in the woods and her, her mother has died not too long ago, f fairly recently. And she's really upset about that, and there, there were, like, people at the funeral who were sort of mocking her dad and saying, like, oh, he did it. He, he, like, paid people to kill her. And she's like, oh, I'll, I'll make them pay for, like, accusing my dad of that stuff. Because as it happens, she lives near a graveyard, and there's zombies in the graveyard, and she is friends with the zombies. She can control the zombies. So she gets the zombies to attack these people that she, she wants revenge on. So she kills, like, the neighbor lady and, like, one of the guys who was at the funeral. And then she kind of turns on her dad, and, and she... Because he actually did have her mother killed. Like, they were right when they said that. So now she, she turns on her father, and the, the zombies attack him, and it's just le like her brother and the new tutor are trying to get the hell out of there, get away from the zombies. And the, they, like, hold up in this barn, and the zombies are attacking, and then at some point the zombies just kind of stop attacking, like, enough that the tutor can, like, run out and get in her car, and then the movie just ends. Like, like, you expect the titular child. She is the main antagonist of this movie. You expect her to show up there in the finale, and she just doesn't. <laughs> like, like, after she kills her father, she's just not in the movie anymore. She just disappears from the movie. It's a very odd choice, narratively. Like, most people would want closure on, like, the evil zombie-controlling little girl. But no, the, the zombies, they, like, kill enough of the zombies that they go away, and, and that's the end of the movie. Like, who cares about that little girl? She's still out there. Her whole family's dead now. I guess the zombies will raise her. I guess the zombies are gonna raise her. Uh, this came out in 77, just a year after The Omen, so this is, like, peak evil children movie. Although, for an evil ch usually, like, the evil child movies, they're, like, young kids, like, like, toddlers, maybe, like, seven or eight at the oldest. This girl looks like she's... Probably a preteen, if not a teenager. And that doesn't really work for an evil child movie. The thing with an evil child movie is, like, children are shitty, but they get away with everything. Because they don't know any better. Like, so, so a child gets, like, like this six-year-old just gets to be fucking evil. And no one stops them because they're, like, six. But this girl is old enough that it's, like, she should be getting in trouble. She should be getting in more trouble than this. And to be fair, she does control zombies. But it's it's not like... Like, everyone knows she controls zombies, I guess. Like, her dad and her brother both seem in on it. They know she controls the zombies. Hmm. It's like that Twilight Zone episode of, like, like the kid who can control things and... His family is just, like, afraid of him. But her, her dad's not really afraid of her. Her, her dad is kind of in there with her. In fact, it seems like her dad is the reason she is, like, just okay with killing people. 
Because there, there's this weird scene in this movie where they're, like, all sitting down to breakfast. It's, like, the second or third day the, the tutor is there. And he tells this story of these, like, Boy Scouts who went camping in the woods and they stirred their soup with, like, a branch from this poisonous bush and all of them died. And he just, like, is laughing about the fact that all of these Boy Scouts fucking poisoned themselves. It's like... Jesus Christ, he comes out of nowhere. Like, before that, he seems like, you know, an okay dude. Like, you're like, something seems up, but they don't seem crazy or anything. And then he does that, and you're just like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Oh, boy, it's it's a fun one, for sure. It's not good. I'm not going to argue it's good. But it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy watching this. And and I put this one up at the top because I figured it would probably be the highlight of this box set. And I was correct. The The Child is absolutely the, the highlight of this box set. After that, we watched Dark August, which... What do you know is is an occultic horror film. I didn't I didn't plan that. You guys know I love occult horror movies. I didn't know this was one of them. Just a happy little coincidence there. That does make like the earlier parts of this movie pretty interesting, pretty fun. Uh basically there was this guy who like like a little girl ran out in front of his car and he hit her and you know, co the courts ruled that it was an accident, he was not at fault, uh, the, the, the little girl ran out in front of him, he, he couldn't have stopped, but uh, the grandfather of the little girl is, is very upset about it, and very upset that he got away with it, so he puts a curse on the man and the people around him, and, and all this weird bad stuff is kind of happening to the dude. Like, two of his friends get severely injured. Neither of them die. Um, very low body count on this one. Disappointingly. Disappointingly low body count on this one. But, uh, two of his friends get injured, and he's like, Ooh, what's the problem here? Let me find out what's going on. And one of his friends tells him, like, Oh, you gotta see this, like, psychic friend of mine. And he, he finally gives in and sees the psychic, and she tells him he's cursed, and, and how to, like, break the curse. And he kind of tries to break the curse, and it kind of doesn't work. And then there's a seance scene. And the seance scene is, like, like nearly all of, like, the last 20 minutes of this movie. Is just this long, long seance scene. Seance scenes are already hard to pull off. It's it's not something you should put in your movie unless you're like, unless you know what you're doing. But this one just lasts fucking forever, and it's so boring, and it brings the movie to just like a grinding halt. And and the seance scene ends with. The old man who's cast the spell, breaking in and pistol whipping the fuck out of the psychic woman, which it doesn't make it worth it. It does not make that scene worth it, but it does make that part very good because you're just like, oh my god, how much longer is this scene gonna go on? And then the old man just bursts in and beats this woman to death with a shotgun, and you're like, okay. Like, I, you should have cut the seance scene down, but that was good. Y y you brought it back. But by that point, like, the curse has turned around on the old man, and, and he gets it in the end. It's, uh... Like, there's stuff I like about it. There are, there are like, good scenes and good ideas. But overall, it just, like, it doesn't work. It doesn't fucking work. It's so... It's dull. It's boring. Like, I, I wish the good scenes were in a better movie, because this movie is boring. And it's not just the seance scene. The seance scene is a big part of it. The seance scene is 
extremely boring and goes on way too long. But there's a lot of other scenes in this movie that are just boring. That is just like, I don't care. Move on. Move on. Come on. Keep it up. Keep up the pace. So, I don't know. There's some charm to it. There's definitely charm to this movie, but... It's just... There's not that much going on. Like, I'm, I'm trying to even think of things to say about it outside of just a retelling of the plot. I thought of one thing to talk about. Because this is directed by Martin Goldman. This is one of two movies Martin Goldman has directed. Uh, the other being a Fred Williamson western, which the Criterion channel has taken to calling The Legend of Black Charlie. That's not the title of the film, but I kind of see why they changed it. Because I, I was watching that movie the other day, and I liked that movie a lot more than Dark August. Uh, a Legend of Black. Charlie gets a recommendation from me. Uh, this one, not so much. But I, I was I was watching that, and I'm like, did a black guy direct this? Because if a black guy directed this, I would feel a little better about the fact that the N-word is just in the fucking title. But nope, it's it's Martin Goldman, who is a white person. I mean, I mean, I guess... I guess Fred Williamson and a couple other black people agreed to be in the movie. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking cancel Martin Goldman <laughs> over naming his film The N-Word, but still, still, like... It makes me uncomfortable. That's what I'll say. It makes me uncomfortable. Dark August, not a fan. Legend of Charlie... Watch it. I am a fan of that one. <laughs> I, you know, it'd be a nice thing to show on Matt's <laughs> movie nights, but my god, I, like, for, I couldn't even put it in the title of the video. I could not even put it in the title of the video. <sighs> it's a good movie, though. And finally, there is Dream No Evil which is uh, about a woman who, uh, it's like a little orphan girl, and she has a dream about meeting her real father. And, and she grows up and she's like engaged to this preacher man. But she finally like finds a way to meet her real father. Uh, but when she gets there, it turns out he's like dead. He's, he's, he's in the city morgue is the problem. He's dead by the time she finds him. But then... It turns out he's not dead. He gets up and starts walking around, and he kills the Undertaker, and then they go off and live in, like, this small little town and in this old house, and uh, he keeps killing people. Um, but then, you know, plot twist at the end, he was dead the whole time, and she was the one killing people, which... Saw that one coming from a mile away. They they project that one hard. <laughs> like, the second you show her father dead, it's like, yeah, okay, so she's the one doing all the murders. Like, there's no other explanation for this. I know it's her from now on. So, so a little bit of, like, a, a reverse Psycho. Like, in Psycho... Spoilers if you haven't seen Psycho, but also spoilers for Psycho are, like, fucking unavoidable. If you don't know how Psycho ends. How do you not know how Psycho ends? Even if you've never seen it, you know how Psycho ends. Like, in Psycho, he's doing all the killings and blaming it on his mother because he thinks his mother's still alive. In this one... She's doing killings for a very similar reason. Like, like in, in Psycho, it's the mother is jealous of these girls that uh, Norman is into. And in this one, her father is, you know, not approving of the men she brings home. So he kills them. Although he really only kills two of her male suitors. Not... 
It's it's not that many. He also kills a police officer and the Undertaker, like I said. So, but I mean, I, Norman Bates didn't kill that many women either. But it's it's the it's the reverse psycho. It's like. What if instead of a guy obsessing over his mother, it's a girl obsessing over his father, or over her father? And I guess they do have the twist that, like, she never knew her father, so she's sort of making all this stuff up about him, um, where, where, you know, Norman Bates' mother, like, was really overprotective in her life. Much like Dark August, it definitely has its moments. It has those moments of, of, like fun of like sheer insanity but it's still mostly pretty boring especially because she doesn't even meet her father until nearly halfway through the film so the first half is just this weird like like her life story of her coming up as an orphan and and meeting this preacher guy and being a part of his like circus tent revival and being a performer in his revival sermons, and it's like, I don't care. Get to the get to the killing part. Get to the horror movie part. It it spends way too long on the intro. And maybe maybe that's like a psycho thing because Psycho does take a little while to get into the horror elements. But Psycho is an interesting movie before it gets into those segments. This is really fucking boring. Like, like with Psycho, it's subversion. You're like, oh, this is a crime movie. We're, we're following, uh, hmm, fuck. We're following the main character of Psycho. And, and she's like, she's stolen some money from her job. And we're like, ooh, it's a crime movie. Is she gonna get away with it? And then it's like, nope, it's a horror movie. <laughs> That's, that's subversion. This is like, here's this woman's incredibly boring life story, and it's like, I know it's a horror film. I, it's called Dream No Evil. There's a fucking axe on the poster. I know this is a horror movie. Get to the horror part. And uh, there's, there's stuff I like about it and stuff I don't really like about it. I, I do get why these films were sort of put together in a triple feature. I think they're a much more cohesive triple feature than the American Horror Project Volume 1, which just seemed to be, like, three random obscure horror movies. These all revolve around, like, children and their relationship to their parents. Like, that's, that's a theme among these. Like, little girl upset about her mother's death, father upset about his ch or grandfather upset about his child's death, little girl looking for her father. Makes sense. Uh, th this is a cohesive triple feature. Um, that said, I definitely preferred The American Horror Project Volume 1. Because that, that had Witch Who Came From the Sea, which I think is just unironically great. Hidden gem of a movie. And Malatista's Carnival of Blood is like a fun, silly, kind of bad movie. And then, you know, you've got the premonition in there, and the premonition I could take or leave. And in this one, I feel like they don't have that, like, witch who came from the sea to, like, tie it together. Like, the child is fun and kind of bad. It's the Malatista's Carnival of Blood of the set. But these other two, I could take them or leave them. There's stuff I like about them, but there's a lot of stuff I don't like about them. I probably like both better than the premonition, but... Even then, like, I, I wouldn't recommend you pick up uh, American Horror Project Volume 2 unless you're doing it, like, just to support Arrow Video, just to support, you know, more American Horror Project releases, because I'm looking forward to the next one. When, when they release Volume 3, I'll buy it, and I will show it on this show. I, I look forward to the American Horror Project Volume 3, but, uh... As for this box set, I feel like, just watch The Child. Just, like, look on Tubi. It's probably on Tubi. Watch The Child. Um, these other two... I don't know, maybe you will like them. Maybe, maybe you will enjoy them, but... The, the, there is charm to them, but they're not very interesting. I, I wasn't into them. So that's the American Horror Project 
Volume 2 from Arrow Video. Um, get Volume 1. Although I think Volume 1's out of print. Hmm. Is Volume 2 out of print? Volume 2 might be out of print too, as well. Get the child. Don't, don't, don't even get the child. Watch the child. Stream the child for free. Yeah, if you're gonna buy one, I, I recommend Volume 1 over Volume 2. Uh, so last time I asked about your favorite rural horror movie, because these are all rural horror movies, you know. Films not made in, like, New York City or, or L.A. Um, personally, probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You can't really go wrong with Texas Chainsaw, although... There's a movie I'm recommending tonight that might count as regional horror, probably, and... I like it a lot better than Texas Chainsaw. Even T Texas Chainsaw, one of the fucking greats. But I'm recommending one of my favorite movies tonight. And it's it's a bit of a rural horror movie. Uh, Lino said American Gothic with Rod Steger. Gotta make sure. I thought it said uh, Rod, Rod Serling of, of Twilight Zone. So that was throwing me off a little. Uh, Rod Steger... Uh, I haven't seen this movie, but it looks interesting. It's from the director of Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, um, which is a movie I love to bits, and uh, also The Incubus, which I showed last year, last October. Um, I wasn't super into it, but, you know, I'm interested. I, I'll, I'll watch another movie from him, sure. Uh, Henry Koslick says he'd like to say Hills Have Eyes, but he doesn't know how close to L.A. that was shot. Um, and I, I couldn't confidently say that either. This might be absolutely a rural horror film, or this might be, like, debatably a rural horror film. I, I'm gonna go ahead and count it either way. Um, because it, it's out in the desert. It's not L.A. It's, I mean, it's, it was made for, like, no money, so that helps. It's not like a Hollywood project. Um... The Hills Have Eyes, interesting movie, weird movie, um, I'm down with it, I like it, I don't think it's even close to Wes Craven's best, but it's a fun little movie. Uh, Gregory House went off, he said pretty much all of them, all, all the greats, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Deliverance, Hills Have Eyes, alright, Gregory's with us, he thinks Hills Have Eyes is is a regional horror movie. Um, I don't know if I would call Deliverance a horror movie per se. Mm -hmm. But I kind of hate to split hairs on the like, is this a horror movie? Like, who gives a shit? It's a good movie. I like Deliverance. I just don't think I would call it a horror movie. Also, uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil he mentions. Um, which... A lot of people like Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, and, and there was stuff I liked about it, but I feel like the joke got old very quickly. Like, it's it's one fucking joke. It's, haha, the kids are killing themselves, and it looks like these two crazy rednecks are, are like, horror villains, and they're not. They just look that way. It's funny, but it, it, it gets old pretty quick. In my opinion, I I get that a lot of people really like that movie. And then he mentions, mentions some from Italy. Uh, the Laughing Windows and Don't Torture a Duckling. Which, it, uh, I suppose there is like a, a film epicenter to Italy. There's places where the films are made, but like a lot of Italian movies could count as regional, you know? Because cause they got, like, deserts in Italy, and they film a lot of stuff out in the desert, you know? Like, like they would do spaghetti westerns, and then they were doing swords and sandals, and then they were doing Mad Max ripoffs, and... Uh, so I, I feel like a lot of Italian cinema is a little regional. Um... Even though, obviously, they're, like, Rome. Rome is where a lot of Italian movies are based out of. Um, on the other hand, 
I don't actually know that much about Italian cinema. Like, I know the movies, I know the directors, I couldn't really tell you that much about their history, so... Take Gregory's word over mine on this one. Those are regional horror movies in Italy. So tonight's question, and this one might be a little weird. I don't know... <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope this question makes sense. What word... Do you, uh, excluding, like, the and of and an and with, I ignore, like, th the common words. What word do you think has appeared in the most movies you've seen, in the title of the most movies you've seen? Because I feel like I've seen a lot of movies with the words dead, blood, black, and, uh, night. Um, and also the word that's informing today's, tonight's triple feature, because the last movie we watched was, you know, Dream No Evil. So tonight, we're going to show an evil triple feature, starting with The Evil Dead 2. You knew it was coming. I recommended Evil Dead. Of course I'm going to show Evil Dead 2. I fucking love Evil Dead 2. So we're going to start with Evil Dead 2. Then we're going to watch... The very strange looking, I'm very excited for this one, Evils of the Night, a, a Vinegar Syndrome release. And finally, we're going back to the five films for five years well. it's It's been a little while. We did Vampire Hookers probably over a year ago. That was like the second movie night, I want to say, we did Vampire Hookers. So this time we're going to do Evil Come, Evil Go. And that's, that's our evil triple feature for next time. Until then, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.